To understand physics, you need to simplify. The world has odd shapes full of rough edges, but in physics, we tend to use round cylinders and perfectly frictionless surfaces. Scientists usually make these simplifications in physics because it is much, much easier to use math to describe what is happening in a simple situation rather than a complicated one. But could you recreate our real and imperfect world in a computer? UCLA professor of applied mathematics, Joseph Turan, does just that. What really got me excited about math was that you could use the, the computer with math to uh, make this digital model of the real world that was as, as realistic as the real world, at least visually. Joseph uses math and physics to describe how things in our real and imperfect world work. He translates things in our world into mathematical equations that can be solved by a computer. So these equations, they're, they're basically, they would tell you everything about what's going on if you could solve them. But they're so complicated that we can't solve them as is. We have to only approximate them. That uses a branch of math called scientific computing um, and numerical analysis where we use the computer to get a very, very accurate estimate to the solution to the physical equations. Joseph's work has very important applications from Hollywood movies to the medical field. Basically, you can use the computer model of the real world to uh, try things out that would cost you a lot of money to do in real life. If you want to uh, have a movie effect of like a dam break. Basically, if you want to get the dynamics of the fluid as it breaks the dam just right, if you want to get it so that it looks like a real dam break or you know, the effect looks right, you have to have the mathematics and the physics right behind it. So you have to bring someone in that's outside of just the artistic world. Because if you just try to sort of uh, draw a dam breaking, it's going to be really hard to get it to where it looks like it really was the physical phenomena happening. He's creating a type of computer program that creates a 3D copy of a surgery patient. Not just any person, but an exact copy of the person having surgery. So the doctor can practice on the 3D version first. If you're doing uh, open heart surgery and you make an incision into the patient, you need to have the response to the incision be the same in the video game as it would be in real life. You would want the tissues to deform in a way that was uh, different than they would be when you went to do it to the real patient. He explains that the hardest objects to simulate are those that are elastic. Objects that are squishy and change shapes, but don't break very often. Try to press on an area of your arm, for example. You will notice that it bounces back to the original shape. This is because it has elasticity. Spring is the is the easiest to describe elastic object. You just have two point masses at the ends of the spring and they just bounce. So as they compress, you'll have forces that repel the two points um, in the spring. And as they extend too far, the spring will want to pull them back together. So you'll have basically these forces that are either pulling them together or pushing them apart. And you can think of the object as being made up of a whole bunch of different springs. Joseph uses simple physics Newton's laws of motion to understand how complex shapes of materials deform when you push, pull, or cut them. Most of the ideas don't work. <laughs> so we usually say, oh, uh, let's try this different discretization of the problem. Let's just try a different way of looking at the problem. <clears throat> and it may take us like six months to learn how to do that. And then after six months of uh, uh, tons of effort, day and night effort, uh, we realize it doesn't work as good. You know, it can happen that it goes even slower. <laughs> when you're trying to push the state of the art, it's basically, the, the only reason it is a state of the art, the only reason there's nothing better is because no one knows what's better. <laughs> so you have to, and, and the reason no one knows what's better is usually because it's hard to figure out what's better. So um, the process of figuring out why the current ideas aren't going to go fast enough or why they don't work as well as other things uh, is really time consuming and really error prone. And you have to be okay with trying new things and having them fail. Um, and if you try them and they don't work, then you know that it didn't work <laughs> and you shouldn't do that. So you can even learn from the, 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 the failures. Build the activities in the Curiosity Machine to understand more about physics and computer simulation.